So, King of the Hill. If there's any animated series that gets more entertaining the older you get, I'd say it's King of the Hill. A very popular series in the US and extremely popular in Japan, to the point they actually have online flame wars over sub versus dub since the 2000s. The show was never as popular in Mexico in the same way The Simpsons are. It lacked that elastic reality The Simpsons used to push borderline cartoony scenarios or reactions on an otherwise down-to-earth setting, and that really meshed well with the average Latin American. While King of the Hill is so down-to-earth, it came and went in such a fashion that it didn't have any sort of backlash when most of the voice cast got replaced in 2005, something that infamously impacted The Simpsons in Latin America. Latin Americans are fonder of cartoony slapstick on animation and sitcoms. At least Hank kept his voice actor the whole run, which is great, as he's the face of the show and basically carries it. Instead, it found an audience once again in recent years, in part by YouTube poop remixers, some of us who relate to the humor, and otherwise people whom finally decided to give the show a fair shake. The show did have a few cultural changes when making the transition to Spanish language. Largely just names, seemingly based around the culture of northern Mexico, namely Nuevo León, which has certain cultural similarities to Texas. And all of us northern Mexicans love our weekend grilled meats after all. Just do not with propane, we use that to keep us warm during winter instead. Not all characters had their names messed with during localization. For example, Buck Strickland and his business by proxy kept their name. So if I missed a character here, either the name remained the same, or it was a minor one-episode character I forgot about. Let's get started with the title of the show itself and by proxy the main character. In English, King of the Hill makes reference to the main character, Hank Hill, and is a witty joke as he is a family man in charge. While its meaning couldn't be translated one to one, the show became Los Reyes de la Colina, Kings of the Hill in Spanish. Why Kings? Because during localization, Hank Hill's name was translated into Hector Reyes, a fairly common sounding name where you in a place like, say, Monterrey in the state of Nuevo León, which is right under Texas. It's so average sounding like Hank Hill, it fits him like a ring. Something to mention though, Hank's characterization in Spanish does change a bit in the way the voice acting was performed. Hank in English always sounds rather calm and soft-spoken, which is why in the first episode it's funny when the lanky child protective services dude Anthony goes to a Hill household and claims Hank has anger issues. But that bit of characterization was kept by Victor Delgado throughout all 13 seasons with Hank sounding rather angry. Like all the repressed generational trauma and having two brain-dead idiots for friends can make him explode at any moment now and without the build-up of the English version. Quiero ver si tu maestra le pone una F a la patria. Lo que hicieron fue incorrecto. No solo deshonraron a la bandera, deshonraron a la república que representa. Vaya, estoy ansioso porque se presente ya esa maldita prueba. Solo estoy tratando de comprar un golpe a todo, varios clavos y largarme enseguida de esta maldita tienda. ¡Eres un imbécil! Anthony became Antonio, by the way. On that note, Peggy Reyes. That might sound like a sham, but in northern Mexico there's actually some women named Margarita who are nicknamed Peggy, probably due to our proximity to the US. But more interesting than that is her maiden name. In English she is Peggy Platter, but in Spanish she is Peggy Plata. The Plata family name translates into English as silver, and it was a cliché that such a family name only belonged to upper class families. Veronica Lodge from Archie has a similar let's give her a rich sounding family name deal, translated as Veronica del Valle. It makes me wonder what the translators thought Peggy's character was like. And next is Bobby, full name Robert Hill, so in Spanish he is indeed Roberto Reyes. So how do you adapt Bobby? Beto, por supuesto. There was a mistake in the episode where he plays soccer in which Hank calls him Bobby when talking with the football coach in a restaurant which makes me think the translated script, at least for the first two seasons, kept the English names, and the voice actors had to keep the localized names in mind at all times. Señor Sowers quería traer a Bobby a ver el partido de los lobos como mi invitado. Luan Platter, Peggy's niece, became Lola Plata, 
nothing much to add here, but her voice actress, Rosie Aguirre, did voice a lot of popular cartoon and anime characters and self-referenced early in the show when Luan complains about classmates who are better than her. De acuerdo, fue Rosie Aguirre, no es justo, ella trabaja mucho. Now for the man, the legend, the myth himself, Dale Gribble. Absolutely nothing changed but his name, even his voice fits perfectly and I'm glad they even kept his voice actor Luis Alfonso Padilla following the 2005 voice actors strike. Dale in Spanish became Diego Gomez. Él tiene su uretra estrecha. <laughs> his wife Nancy kept her name, so only the last name was changed, therefore Nancy Gomez. Joseph, on the other hand, had the most basic name change, becoming Jose. Jose Gomez. I guess the joke writes itself. But enough about them, what about him? Arguably the true cock of the series, depending on who you ask. John Redcorn, who was renamed into Sancho Mazorca. Mazorca means corn cob, by the way. No te preocupes, todo estará bajo control. No voy a permitir nada incorrecto en mi casa. Hola, Sancho Mazorca. But something that did change in his characterization was that he speaks with a somewhat broken Spanish in a way that conveys he's a native and speaks his own tongue first and foremost. Diego, yo leer que el gobierno regresar 4000 hectáreas a los Utes cerca de la reserva Oraji. No ser buen precedente para la demanda de nuestra tribu. Ser eh, mochila nueva. Vérsete bien. Hoy dar plática en salón tuyo sobre papel de los nativos en Día de Gracias. Call it either a dated stereotype or a cliché. But given John's characterization and pride for his heritage, it kind of fits. Bill Fontaine de la Tour Daughterville was renamed to Blas Dávalos de la Cantoya. Blas isn't a common name and its Greek root means he who does not speak well or he who mumbles. I guess you can stretch the meaning of the letter as spineless. His first voice was rather deep and husky but still had certain shakiness to it while his second voice post-2005 sounds closer to his original English voice. Even though the replacement voice actor covered for the original in an early episode and did the same husky deep voice. Gobernadora! Sargento Blas Rigoberto Dávalos de la Cantoya, a sus órdenes, señora. Sabes lo que podría ser el maldito motor de la marcha. Tienes buena compresión. Mm, este día fue terrible, creo que todo lo hice mal. No estuviste ahí. Ya está, Capitán, como a usted le gusta. Me llamo Blas Dávalos de la Cantoya y exijo que me dejen unirme a ustedes. Necesito algo como esto en mi vida. A huge fan favorite, Jeffrey Dexter Boomhauer was renamed to Benjamin Benavides Buenavista, but much how he's just called Boomhauer in English, in Spanish he's just called Benavides. Unfortunately, the whole speaking really fast thing does not translate all that well. It's not a thing here as it is in Texas. But at least he was given a really pleasant cool guy voice, and they did the best they could with the whole talk really fast thing. Los he estado llamando desde hace más de un mes. Los he buscado cada vez que ese perro rabioso cruza la calle y se dedica a molestar las 24 horas del día y nadie me atendió. ¿Cómo van a hacer algo con ese perro si lo único que oigo es una maldita computadora que no va a venir aquí para callar a ese perro del infierno? Bueno, ya no estoy seguro, amigo. El otro día tuve problemas con mi auto en Little Rock. Intenté repararlo durante horas, amigo. Buckley apareció y tocó el cofre y de pronto arrancó. Sí, aunque camine por el Valle de la Muerte, creo estoy que... Estoy a él... punto de reparar. Yo soy... Solo el trampolín. Can, Min, and Can Junior Connie kept their names. Although Connie kept a thick foreigner accent like her parents, but wasn't she born in California though? Se arrepintió de ir al viaje y ahora debemos pagar todo el alquiler del condominio. No podemos hacerlo. Acabamos de comprar la maldita rocola. Tal vez el idiota del vecino sirva de algo. Ay, no lo entiendes. Él es mamá del soccer. Si no te acepta, no acepta a Ana Beto y tiene bastantes problemas. Tenemos 12 años, Beto. Ya somos viejos. Debemos pensar qué haremos con nuestras vidas. Yo no puedo decidir entre ser violinista o encabezar la lucha contra el uso excesivo de antibióticos. That said, I love the interactions between Bobby and Connie. ¿Qué te parece ese bote de basura? Vamos a volarlo. Si fuera una bomba cereza, te diría que sí. Pero esta es la bomba. Ah, young love. Too bad I'm a crusty bitter old man now. On that segue... Qué trucazo, ¿no? Cotton Hill. War veteran. Womanizer. Misogynist. Abusive father. Bitter old cut and... Somehow loving grandfather? No puedo competir contigo. 
Si es el concurso de ser el mejor papá, tú ganas. Porque tú tuviste a Beto, yo solo te tuve a ti. Uh, gracias, papá. A simple name change, Carlos Reyes, everything else was kept the same. Except he went through various voice actors. Why though? Hank's friends, who also needed as pats during the episode Hank's backstory, Spanish name, lo que Héctor trae atrás, in English means what Hank has behind, are named David Rojas, Saúl, Pedro, and Luis. And that's about it. I'm sure I'm missing a lot of other one-time characters, while others did kept their original names. The show will come back in Hulu and will most likely have most, if not all, of the pre-2005 voice cast as The Simpsons now do ever since season 32, and Futurama does in its new season. After watching the new Beavis and Butthead seasons and movie, I trust Mike Josh's judgment, as well as Greg Daniels and their creative team for the revival. <laughs> Did you know that file cat links also streams on Twitch most weekends, and that uh, he posts evil engravings and updates on Twitter. So don't be like that boob He-Man and follow me. This was Skeletor. Your parents never loved you. Until next time. <laughs> Oh, Peggy, oh, Peggy.